And the first speaker will be Daniel Kimball in Science Foundation and talk about the future of science fair. Alright, well, hello everyone. Um, I hope you all are enjoying the conference so far. This conference is, of course, held by the Science Foundation. And you all might be wondering what else the Science Foundation does. Well, there are a few things. Uh, we fund external research at universities across the country, well, the United States, and also across the world. And we do in-house research at the Science Foundation Research Center in Mountain View, California. Actually, uh, later today, Matthew McConnell will be giving a talk about Myosin's work. It's going on in California right now. So that'll be exciting, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about a small program that the Science Foundation operates called the Academic Initiative. So today I'm going to tell you all, well specifically, what the Academic Initiative is, and also the new direction we're moving in, and our new mission, sort of consistent with that direction. And I'll tell you specifically about some of our students, just to give you a better idea of who's actually involved with the Academic then I'll tell you all about the group of those students form, and finally how you yourselves can become involved with the initiative if you'd like to, because it's entirely possible that you will want that. Alright, so historically the academic initiative has been all about developing students. Um, its purpose has been to find students, often college undergraduates or graduate students, who are interested in doing science research, and to give them ideas for projects, and provide them with mentorship on those projects, and sometimes to give them funding, either in the form of a merit-based scholarship that will sort of reward our best students, or in the form of a materials grant that will specifically uh, pay for laboratory materials to enable projects to happen. Um, those are all sort of important tools, and those are the main things that we've done in the past. It's all been about developing researchers, sort of finding the next generation of science researchers, and enabling them to become actual career researchers. Um, we are changing some of the. See, all of those old things are still happening, but we're also branching out in a couple of new directions. So uh, those are specifically outreach and education. But before I talk much about that, I'll tell you all, well, a couple of main things. First of all, we're going to be updating our website shortly. That's going to be pretty comprehensive and pretty fundamental to what we do in the future. But also, even more importantly than that, we're going to start developing an online course. Uh, a brief summer length, 12 or 13 lecture long, sort of introduction to rejuvenation biotechnologies. The whole point of that will be to teach students to think of aging as the gradual and feasibly reversible accumulation of damage. And that'll be a pretty fundamental part of what we do, because that'll let us educate students, anyone who's interested really in taking that course freely available on our website, and also even interested lay people who would like to get involved with that, it'll be open to them also. So that's one of the most important things we'll be working on in the coming months. But to give you all more detail on our general mission, I talked about research already, the sort of idea of funding students, giving them ideas, and giving them mentorship in order to develop them into career science researchers. But we don't just want to have our students doing research projects. We'd like to develop them a little more fully than that. So we'd like to help them become actual advocates of both the Sense Foundation and of the Academic Initiative. So to make that happen, we're going to make outreach projects available. So in addition to research projects, there'll be outreach projects. And in addition to mentoring on research, there'll be mentoring on outreach. Those outreach projects will be pretty straightforward. Uh, simple things like having a template for flyers on our website that students can print off and distribute around their university, or outlines for talks that students can give. Uh, that'll enable them to take pretty small steps towards spreading the word, both about what we do and about what they themselves are working on. Um, so there's research, there's outreach, and then there's education. I talked about the coursework earlier. That'll be the main component of our educational work. But uh, the sort of whole point of that is to make sure that our students understand fundamentally what SENS is, which is largely damage repair, and to help them tell other people about that. All right, so I've told you generally what the academic initiative is, what it's been doing, and what it's going to do. But it's not some sort of amorphous idea. It's specifically people who are involved with the academic initiative who make it exist. So one of our students is Adiv Johnson. 
He's a first year graduate student at the University of Arizona, working towards his PhD. Um, he's actually been interested in SENS since he was a high school student. When he was in high school, he lost an uncle to aging and sort of thought about how you know, science has conquered diseases in the past, and he wondered what science could do about aging. He did some Google searches, found out about Aubrey, and then he's been following Aubrey's work and SENS in general ever since then. So when he started college as an undergraduate, he decided to study biology, and he started up on a project doing caloric restriction in mosquitoes. Uh, that led to a publication which he was on. And after that, just as he was starting his graduate studies, he did another project on mosquitoes, which was more his own, and that ran out of funding. So he came to us, he already knew about the SENS Foundation and the academic initiative. We gave him a grant that let him finish his project, and now he's stayed on with us. He's working on a new literature review on DNA methyltransferase. So he sort of came to us because we provide this funding, and then he stayed because we provide ideas for projects and mentorship. So all three of those sort of historical research aspects are really important to our actual student development. Uh, another student of ours is Barry Bentley. He's also actually been interested in SENS type research since high school. Uh, when he was an undergraduate in London, he went to a talk of Aubrey's and then was specifically interested in SENS. Uh, shortly after that, he met Stuart Callenport, one of our longtime academic initiative mentors. And Stuart told Barry about an opportunity to volunteer at SENS4, the conference that preceded this one by two years. And Barry came to that and volunteered. And it was there that he became more actively involved with the academic initiative. So now Barry is working on an ethics project with Stuart. And he's also actually going to start studying for his PhD at Cambridge here in October in neuroscience. So in about three or four years, we could have another Cambridge PhD going around talking about SENS, which is pretty great. Yeah, so one more student, uh, Max Pito. He's not actually a student anymore, which is significant. Uh, Max first heard about SENS around 2005 while he was an accountant. And he decided that he wanted to do SENS research as a career. So he went back to college. And when he did that to sort of repeat his undergrad and learn more about science, he contacted the academic initiative. Uh, he took up one of our project ideas for the accumulation of metals in humans. Uh, that ended up being published in Rejuvenation Research. And Aubrey liked it. So now Max works at the Science Foundation Research Center in California. That was a pretty great progression for an academic initiative student. And then now he's mentoring a couple of our present students on a literature review that they're doing. So we've sort of gone from receiving mentorship to giving it, which is exactly what we want to see in the long term with really all of our students. So and taken together, we have a sort of network of students that we're developing. And it's been pretty successful so far. And we found a good number of talented young people who like life, who want to be a little bit healthier for a little bit longer. And you know, we've seen them actually make progress. We have people working on their PhDs, MDs. A few years down the line, they'll have graduated. They'll be mentoring more students of ours. So it's kind of a long-term game that keeps on going. Um, it's still small, though. So we have, obviously, the people I've pictured up there. Uh, we have an additional about half dozen volunteers and mentors. Uh, we also have a handful more students, uh, Nick Shong, Francis Kendall, Brian Bucarepa. They're all doing great so far. We have a couple more who joined us just last weekend, actually. But big picture, it's still a small program. And that's where, if you all are interested, you can actually specifically help us. So there are clearly a lot of researchers here. Um, if you have projects that you'd like to involve any academic initiative students on, we'd be very interested in that. That could be something specific and concrete in your lab. It could be a literature review that you're working on now or planning on working on. Uh, any of those things can be really helpful. Also, if you need graduate students or postdocs, we do get people asking us where they can go to study to do sort of SENS-related research. So that would also be great. Uh, prospective donors, obviously, the academic initiative will never say no to your money. Um, there are a lot of ways that we can use it. Uh, our materials grants to make projects like Adib's second mosquito project actually happen. Uh, Merit-based scholarships. Barry got one of our scholarships earlier. Uh, those are both quite important, and we can actually put your name on those if you'd like. Uh, in addition to that, to develop our online coursework, money certainly helps there. And of course, marketing to sort of spread the word about what we're doing. We can do that on a larger scale more easily with more funding. 
than our students also. Any students who are here, if you'd like to be involved with the academic initiative, we can certainly involve you. And uh, also, if anyone would like to just broadly volunteer, you know, whatever your skill set is, I should be able to find some general way to use you. Uh, right, so we actually are pretty fortunate to have a lot of people representing the academic initiative here right now. Uh, Aaron, unfortunately, actually wasn't able to make it, but Stuart has been a mentor with us for a long time. Kamal also has. Uh, Dave has been volunteering with us for a good while. Barry, of course, is one of our students. Max, a mentor. Lucas has been with us for a long time. Lisa's starting mentoring. And Kelsey, of course, actually founded the academic initiative. So you can speak to any of them, all of them. You can talk to me. Uh, my email address is right at the bottom there if you would like to get in contact about the academic initiative. I essentially run the program, so I'm the person to talk to. Uh, yeah, if any of you all would like to be involved, we can certainly use more people because we've got a pretty good thing going here, but it's still in its early stages, still getting started. And we can use more help to actually grow it to a more significant size. So uh, thank you all, and I guess I'll take questions. Thanks, thank you, Daniel. Is there any more information? Yes, please. In uh, thinking about the, the, the course that you're talking about providing, I don't know if this is something that you're doing or not, but I was just wondering, if you had a, uh, a sort of university affiliation with that course, whether there could be some opportunity there for, for <coughs> students, at least under the North American system, to use that course for a credit transfer, maybe even if it was of a certain standard to their, their science credits. And then I guess that would sort of provide an opportunity to maybe promote and get more people involved at different universities, because there'd be that incentive there. Right, that's an important idea. Um, for the coursework, the sort of plan, it's two phases. First of all, we'll make basic lectures with some sense of branding that we can just post on our own website. And then after that, uh, there are universities that do offer accredited online courses, certainly in the US and I guess also to a limited extent in the UK. So we'll sort of tweak our coursework to fit their accreditation requirements. Uh, take off the sense branding, and then we can make those available yeah. through universities. I mean, even if I, I don't even think it necessarily needs to have the sense branding removed, right. but I think well, if it, the universities that I've attended, if I were to try and get that as, a, as a, a, a transferred credit, it would probably make them feel more comfortable at doing that, not knowing a lot about it, if it had some sort of university affiliation with it, it would be easier to, to do that. Right, yeah, the affiliation, it would help expose a lot of current college students to it. Yeah. And certainly to put more faith behind it. Any other? Okay, not that. We'd like to thank you very much, and we remember your email address in case of more information. Thank you. Thank you.